Hello and welcome to the United Stand. Red Rumours is back. Your latest Manchester United transfer news weekly on a Monday afternoon. We've got loan watch, transfer news and all that jazz. Fasten your seatbelts, get involved. We're here with you till the next, tra next transfer window in January. And there is loads and loads to talk about. Where are we going to start? Well, I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about. A ridiculous transfer rumour that came out on Sunday morning. Manchester United's number new, number seven, lone watch. But let's start off with flavour at the moment, Harry Kane. Could Harry Kane come to Manchester United? Well, first of all, I'm going to say this. Mbappe, Usman Dembele, £150 million, Neymar, £200 million. Harry Kane is contracted to Spurs till 2022. If he continues with this form and he has a good World Cup, he probably will leave next summer. Because as much as I like Spurs and the way they play, and I think Pochettino is a good manager, I cannot see them ever winning a title. And I think Harry Kane deserves to win titles. He's doing fantastic. Would he come to Manchester United? Look, the thing about Harry Kane is... Him and Lukaku's careers mirror each other. Over the last few years, they've scored loads of goals for fun in the Premier League. And they're literally separated by two months in age. They're both 24. Could Kane and Lukaku play together at Manchester United? Question one. I don't think so. I think they operate around the same area. They do fantastic things. They score in loads of goals. If you put them up together up front, I think they'd clash. They might score 30 to 40 goals in their own clubs. You put them together, I don't think they'd, I think they'd score 20 each. I don't think they'd complement each other that well. Another reason I don't think United would be in for him is, again, he would cost £150 million or more. And why do we want... Manchester United have got other issues in their squad. Why would they want to go and buy somebody they've already basically got? Whether you think Kane's better or Lukaku, I think it's an open debate. Maybe some people would lean towards Kane, but it's not a foregone conclusion. And as I've been saying over the last few weeks, I wouldn't swap Lukaku for anybody because it's not just his goals. I know he misses the odd chance here and there, but it's what he does off the ball. It's how he occupies, occupies the opposition defence and forces them back and plays off the last man, which creates so much space for the number 10, which I'm going to come back to in a minute. So Kane to United, I don't see it. Kane to probably Real Madrid, I do. And it's a bit like what the problem we've got with Zlatan. I don't see Zlatan and Lukaku complementing each other that well anyway. Um, Kane and Lukaku, I can't see it. So unless you're going to buy him in bench one and work them together like we do Martial and Rashford, which I can't see, £150 million currently for United could be spent a hell of a lot better elsewhere. Winger, right back, another midfielder, you know. But uh, Kane's a good player. I mean, the only thing I would say about him... Is he a bit of a big game bottler? That's been levelled at Lukaku previously. Kane scored a hat-trick last week in the Champions League against the Cypriot club. Does he ever really turn up against the big clubs? I think he start, I think this season is the season he'll turn that corner. Um, can't wait to see him playing Real Madrid over the next uh, few weeks and obviously the World Cup. But I don't see him at United, if I'm totally honest. Anyway, let me go back to that number 10 position. The number 10 position at Manchester United is getting so much space at the moment. Is Mkhitaryan totally grasping that opportunity? For me, it's a big no. He's had a good season, but there's so much space there. He should be a comp he should be up there for player of the year already. There's so much space that Lukaku and Matic and everybody's creating for him. He's not grabbing the opportunity. I mean, against Palace at the weekend, at home, loads of space, he gets subbed off. And a lot of people are concerned about Mkhitaryan. If you parachute a top class number 10 into our team now, we will go up a level. We will go up a gear. We're good at the moment, but we will go up a gear because I don't think we're getting everything we need from our number 10. You've got Lukaku up front, you've got Pogba Matic, you've got uh, Bayi and Jones, you've got De Gea in goal, you've got a really strong spine. Slip a number 10 in there who can shoulder that, that, that position and we'll go up a level, like I say. For me, it's Griezmann. The number 7 shirt is free. That is significant. When you sell your number 7 in January and it's left free till the end of the season, I get that. But when you go into a new season and you keep number 7 free... That is weird. That is weird. This is our most iconic shirt, one of the most iconic shirts in world football, and it is free. It's Griezmann's. Um, he was coming to Manchester United in June. His agent said it, United know it, and for moral reasons, he stayed at Atletico Madrid because of the transfer ban. If this echoes anything United have done in the past, like Roy Ruben Van Nistelrooy when he was going to sign, he was out for a year with a knee injury, and we stood by him, and, and, and he was indebted, and he came to the club. I suspect United have had a chat with Griezmann and said, look, we really wanted you in the summer. We're really disappointed. But what, what, a, what a great person you are to stand by your club. We still really want you in a year's time. And I think Griezmann won't forget that. And I think that's a reason in itself. The second reason is, I think he'd fit Manchester United like a glove. Number seven shirt in that number 10. We need a decent number 10. I think he'd, I think he'd run the club. From that position and he wouldn't have a load of pressure on his shoulders either because he's got Lukaku ahead of him he's got Matic and Pogba behind him he's got Martial and Rashford one side Mata Lingard the other he's got so much good players around him to support him and I think he would be fantastic in that position I think he'd score a lot of goals I think he'd create a lot of goals but also the big thing from a United financial point of view and United are a financial club 
He's going to come for £90 million. Third place in the Ballon d'Or. One of the best players in Europe for £90 million. We just spoke about Mbappe and Dembele there. They're going for £150 million. His release clause is £90 million. He is going to be a bargain. Now, people will be going, whoa, £90 million is not a bargain. It is for someone like that now. When Neymar's going for £200 million, Mbappe at 18 is going for £150. If you can get Griezmann at 27 for £90 million, that is an absolute bargain. And I feel that that is what United will do. And we can posture about it and we can say, oh, it's not going to happen. We thought it was going to happen last summer. We know why it didn't happen last summer. We were all right to say Griezmann was going to come to United. It was just the ban that stopped it. My only concern is for £90 million, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Chelsea, Man City will all think the same. What a bargain he is. And what it comes down to is... Is Griezmann a moral person? Is he going to stand by the fact that he was coming to United and he stayed for another year at Atletico Madrid? Well, the proof's in the pudding. He obviously is a moral person because he stood by Atletico Madrid for six months while they've got a transfer ban. So I think he'll stand by United backing him and wanting him at number seven for United. And I think he will be here, but not in January, in the summer. The transfer window, uh, the transfer rumour I wanted to talk to you about from Sunday morning, which was all over the red tops, was nine goal into United. This has come from Shaka Hislop on ESPN in America and is yet again another indication of how poor and lazy punditry is from ex-professional footballers. I don't know whether they're, added, they're handed scripts or anything like that, but I watched Match of the Day two weeks ago and heard Danny Murphy and, and, and who else it was saying what a great season Mkhitaryan's having. You're not watching United. Mkhitaryan's got good stats. He's not having a great season. And then on the Sunday, on Saturday night, I heard the same thing again. Marcus Rashford's having a sensational season. Rashford's having an OK season. He's having a good season. But recently, on that left-hand side, the last two league games, I think he's been quite poor. It's just, un it's just made up nonsense, fed to the masses. Shaka Hislop saying nine goal into United. I mean, straight away, if you've got any brain about Manchester United and transfer news, you'll know we were linked to him in the summer and you'll know he's just signed a new contract and he's touching, touching 30. We're not signing nine goal in, but it's all over the press Sunday morning. So that's dead in the water. Let's talk about Lone Watch. Fozu Menz is having a great season. He didn't play at the weekend, but he's having a great season and it's the first Red Rumours. So we can talk about Fozu Menz. He's been playing every game. He couldn't play at the weekend against us because he's where his parent club. But interesting to see if he plays the next game for uh, Crystal Palace when they play Chelsea. I think he will. Um, he'll probably play it right back because Rashford sent Matt Ward fella back to nursery, didn't he? So they'll need a new right back now. But Fozu Menz is doing really well. Andres Pereira at Valencia was doing OK. He was getting picked for games. But last week, Real Sociedad, they lost 3-2. Pereira was on the bench. He came on in the 75th minute. So Pereira forced the move. Mourinho wanted him to stay. He forced the move to Valencia. I think he's got an eye on the Brazil World Cup squad. But if you sat on the bench at Valencia, Andreas, as much as I love you, you made a mistake. There's opportunities at United now and you're in Valencia. He needs to get his first team place back in Valencia. That's what I think because Mourinho wanted him to stay here. If he was moaning about staying on the bench for United, then he looks very silly if he's going to be doing it at Valencia. He needs to force his way back in there, which I think he can. He's a top talent. And Sam Johnston, goalkeeper at Aston Villa on loan. They want him on a permanent deal. I think he will go there. I don't really see a future for him there. Anyway, that's Red Rumours. Whew, loads to get through. We got through it. I hope you're glad that Red Rumours is back. I certainly am. It will be up every Monday. Drop a like. Give us your thoughts on everything you've spoken about. Who's better, Kane or Lukaku? Could you see Kane at Manchester United? And how would that work with Lukaku? Griezmann, are you, how sure are you he's going to be the next number seven? Because I'm really sure. Nangolan nonsense. Pereira, should he have stayed? Should he have gone? Lots to discuss. Remember tonight, we're back at 8 o'clock with Skype Goldbridge. You call in unscripted and give us your thoughts. And if you haven't seen the fan cams from the weekend, we had a Holly Hollyoaks actor and we had a Game of Thrones. Winter is coming. Kings of the North on the United Stand. Check them all out and I'll see you tonight at 8 o'clock. Thanks everybody for watching. Love it. Love Red Rumours. It's back. The studio's back. We're back with Red Rumours and we'll be back again next Monday. Thanks for watching. Drop a like if you like it.